everyone, it's Maria, and today I wanted to talk to you about education. <laughs> now, many of you who have been watching for a while know that I am a homeschooler, and those of you who are watching because I am a, a reading fiend know that things that I love and I'm passionate about are social justice issues, diverse voices, history, art, those kinds of things. Uh, and so this video I'm super excited about doing for you. Some of you might have heard me talk about the writing program Brave Writer before. This is put on by Julie Bogart and the idea behind it is kind of to weave writing as well as art, music, and lots of different things, nature, into your education. And uh, there are several groups online that are great idea brainstorming places for this, but I was on one of them on Facebook and somebody asked, it was her first year homeschooling and she has, I think a four year old and a high schooler and she's starting homeschooling and she's supposed to be doing American history this year with her, um, her high schooler. And she said she really wanted to do a good job at educating her daughter with, um, diverse voices and to learn not just about what the textbooks teach you, but to really gain a broad perspective of how history has affected lots of different people, especially those who are more uh, marginalized or disenfranchised. And she asked for ideas. And I honestly, guys, this, the last couple weeks have been awful, but it was the first time that I got excited over something because I just started pouring out different ideas. And uh, the more I thought, the more I came up with, and I asked her if it was okay if I did a video on it and post a link to the sites because I thought it would be easier for me to just get out my ideas um, on here. Obviously, I do not have high schoolers yet. I have been a youth pastor before, so I've educated high schoolers, but not on history before. So I got really excited, especially when she asked how to kind of do things that her younger one can get involved with. So I thought this would be a great idea for anybody. Um, this video will probably be more geared to home towards homeschoolers. However, if you are a person who feels like you don't know much about history and you're missing out, or you don't like history and you don't understand why people like me can get so excited, this video is for you, I think, because in my opinion, education just does not end when you leave school. Education is something that you can constantly add into your life. And while I know it's not nonfiction November, um, I'm really excited to share with you not only some books, but some ideas and some approaches and some resources because this, like, it's 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 my jam. Social justice and history is is two of my, like, boxes that I like to check. So I will try and kind of make this quick. Um, also, just a side note, um, I am going to be going on vacation um, or just random other family stuff for the next uh, week or so. So you will be getting some pre-filmed videos. Hope that's okay with you. If it's not, <laughs> I guess you'll have to deal with it. Um, but yeah, so if I'm not, you know, responding right away, that's what's going on. So, all right, let me just dive in so this doesn't get forever long. First up, I really, really think it is important to introduce, especially to a high schooler, the idea of primary sources. Part of the problem we have so much right now with our society is people take everything at face value and don't look at the primary sources. They don't know how to check, to, to fact check. They don't know where things are coming from. And I think it's really important to be able to look at primary documents and see for yourself uh, what they're saying and who they are empowering who are they not empowering uh, what effects could they have and so my first suggestion is primary documents um, I actually just checked this out for myself in the library the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution it's been a very long time since I've read these I think I was in high school the last time I read these through and so I thought it's a good time to to pick those up again to really know what it says and to to judge for myself what I think so that's the first thing is primary documents. Now there are several, several different places you can get these. Now the, where, where am I? Uh, ha, it's right here. Using primary sources in the classroom, examining our past, understanding our present, considering our future. This is put out by Shell Educational Publishing. Um, I actually checked this one out from our library. There is another one that I desperately want to get up my hands on. It's called Reading Like a Historian that is put out by the um, Stanford Education. 
And you can look online to find a lot of their resources on Reading Like a Historian. They have several lesson plans in there as to how to use primary documents for a lesson and to talk about them. When I watched a video, I don't even remember, it was a couple years ago when I saw them talk about this for the first time, of kids who were in the inner cities debating, I think, one of Lincoln's speeches back and forth and what it really meant and what the, the implications were. And I just thought it was, that's how history is supposed to be. It's supposed to be exciting and intriguing and it's supposed to help you understand yourself better. And I just, that it just, all the light bulbs went off. I got so excited. So use primary sources in your classroom. If you, whether you're a teacher or homeschooler or you're trying to learn for yourself, a great place to look at is teachdocs.org, and I will put the links below. It's That's organized by the National Archives by era, so you can specifically look up if, which era of time you're looking at, and there's lots of different primary documents on there to study. Um, also, uh, History Pin <laughs> has uh, people that can, depending on where they are, they put on the map and the year different pictures from from that place. And so you can see how places have changed over time. You can see ordinary people, you can see more historic moments. I think pictures really do speak volumes. And I think it's a great way to kind of get your student excited and interested. When you start viewing history as people with stories, just like you and me, and not just some numbers <laughs> and names in, the, in a textbook, it gets a lot more exciting uh, when you start re realizing that they're just regular people that actually you probably came from. <laughs> um, Smart History is another place that has uh, different art, uh, historic art pieces. One of my big things, especially with the Brave Writer lifestyle, is she talks about using art to encourage learning. And I think art is a great way to see what people were thinking of at the time. I mean, everybody knows Norman Rockwell and what those pictures signified for that time era. Um, there are also great uh, minority artists that I don't think get enough play. Kara Walker is one of my very favorites. She does just um, gut-wrenching art on, um, which would be better for older, older people for definitely sure, not your younger. Um, but she has a lot of silhouette arts and she talks about kind of the slave narrative and how African Americans have been marginalized using silhouettes in her art. and. It, it's just some of the most breathtaking pieces that I've seen. Um, you can look up to, online, look up whatever minority you are looking for and American, like African American, Native American, Asian American artists. Um, you will find so many different websites. A lot of times we just use the, the internet for email, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Use it for actual <laughs> web searching. I often forget about that myself, but there are so many options out there by great, great organizations. Uh, the Library of Congress has some, some great resources as well. Um, just even like the Holocaust um, archive, there's so many stories that people are even starting to voice record people telling their actual stories from different periods of times. You can, you can look up Titanic survivors on YouTube talking about their experience. Use the internet for more than just the basics. Y your mind will be blown, I promise. Uh, I'm still finding, and you can find fan art on different history times. Everybody's a nerd for something and there are definitely history nerds out there that want to share their enthusiasm with some really cool web stuff out there. And it's a great way to also get your high school or, or yourself to start remembering to fact check. When somebody has something out there, don't take them at their word. Look on Snopes, look on other places to, to see where the original sources came from and if they were peer reviewed. Those are some great skills that they will come in handy for, for any advanced studies that they're going to do. Uh, another thing, <laughs> like actual field trips. I am actually looking through this one. This one's on Indiana. I just looked through a South Dakota one because we're doing a trip there. Um, I learned a lot about random things I didn't know. Um, so I, I love the Field Museum in Chicago with the T-Rex the skeleton of Sue. Uh, if you heard of that before, it was the first completed T-Rex skeleton that they found. And I didn't realize that it came from came from South Dakota. There was actually a legal battle between who owned it and who had the rights to dig it up. And then, um, yeah, 
the Chicago got it from South Dakota. They now have since gotten more skeletons in South Dakota, but I never would have known that had I not looked through just a guide to the state. There's some really cool things in here. Um, I hadn't realized that in Indiana, Indiana territory being larger and William Henry Harrison, while maybe was kind of a lame president, he did a lot for the Indiana territory states. Um, so find these places and go to them. Uh, there's so many people there that are willing to talk through things with you, whether they're historical societies, uh, presidential libraries are a great kind of capsule of what that time era was for people. And I think uh, you can learn a lot from those things. I know there's the Civil Rights Museum down south that I desperately want to get to, as well as the African American Museum um, up that was just opened with the Smithsonian. Uh, there's a Native American Museum over there. We have one uh, in Indiana at El Jork. I know there's lots of different places you can go to and just call ahead and see if there's somebody who's willing to talk to your student one-on-one -on -one about what that place meant for history. Um, so that's a great, great thing as well. Uh, comprehensive books. Don't go with a textbook. Go with like things like A Different Mirror by Ronald Takaki, A Multicultural America History, uh, America's Hidden History, Kenneth Davis, Untold Tales of the First Pilgrims, Fighting Women, and Forgotten Founders Who Shaped the Nation. And then these two are some of my very favorites. Gail Collins is America's Women and When Everything Changed. This does a great job of talking about how women, before even America became America. So I think when, once they start with, a, they start with the colonies and she does talk about how obviously Native American people were here way before that. Um, but she's just kind of starting with where we have the written histories um, for, you have to start somewhere. So she talks about that, but you hear about how the lives of women have changed what their everyday lives were like, not just the famous people, but what the everyday people were like. And I think when you start noticing just the the everyday life, the, the, the clothes they had to wear, the customs they had to follow, you start getting a better concept for what life was like and how that affected history. Um, historical fiction or actual, fic not fiction, but um, historical books. There's George Washington's Spy Master, How the Americans Outspied the British and Won. There's Liar, Temptress, Soldier, Spy. Uh, about, and I will, I'll link all these below, about the Civil War um, for women who really kind of use different roles to, um, to their benefit, depending on which side they were fighting for in the Civil War. Um, look at genealogical records. I think it would be a great time for, if, if you have family that is, have been here for several uh, generations, look up to see where you come from. We found out some really weird stuff about our family uh, around the Civil War era, as well as back before that. I think that's really a cool thing to do. Um, historical fiction, Lori Anderson does several really good ones that I've heard about. Um, and then look in just historical fiction in general. These is my words, Sarah Agnes Prime, uh, Invisible Man, Ralph Ellison. Look up writers that represent different minorities, whether they're um, Maya Angelou, uh, Alice Walker for African American, um, Louis, Louis, Louise uh, Erd, Erdrich, Erdrich, I can't talk today, I'm just too excited, Erdrich, and Joseph Brucock uh, are uh, Native American writers who've done a lot of work. Um, there's some really amazing graphic novels that are shorter to read, but can be kind of a great way to break up things. Uh, Congressman John Lewis released the March Trilogy, which talks about the civil rights movement. Um, Ethan Hawke actually collaborated on a book called In Day, which is about the Apache Wars, and it's a graphic novel. Just beautifully done. Uh, I really enjoy those books as well. So look up graphic histories, because you'll find more than you expect to find. Uh, music from that time era, you can even stream a lot of this for free if you have Amazon Prime. Uh, I looked up some colonial hist uh, music that we're going to play while we're working on colonial history this year. Uh, when, music tells a lot about the time it comes from, and I think when you start noticing those things, uh, it, history comes alive and it becomes richer. There's recipes online. There are several YouTube channels, I will link below, at least one of one or two of them where they will show you recipes from that time era. So if you have somebody who likes cooking, cook the food from that time frame. There's a show called Supersizers. Uh, I think 
that's the entire title of it, but supersizers where they cook, they're British, but they cook different time era foods. Uh, there's one, I'm trying to remember his name right now and I will link it below. Um, but he does a lot of colonial cooking and talks about, uh, different recipes from those time frames. Seriously, just use your internet and you will find a plethora of free resources to make history come alive. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is using, <laughs> yeah, other like books that Bill Bryson wrote one summer, 1927. There are so many books that are just about years, uh, 1491, 1066. There's several years where they have books that are just about that particular year and you get kind of a chunk of time and what it was like and what was going on in those people's lives. I think those are really valuable. Um, I told her, please, please, please teach her about heroes from those different eras, especially that are women and minorities. This one is 80 Days, Nellie Bly and Elizabeth Bisland's History Making Race Around the World. Nellie Bly is one of my all-time favorite heroes of history. Uh, if you don't know about Nellie Bly, Google her because she's great. She was inspired by Jules Verne's 80, um, Around the World in 80 Days and decided to race around the world. Now, in the 20s, I think is when she did this, uh, it was not normal for a woman to travel unaccompanied, and she did it, and she raced another woman traveling unaccompanied. I have not gotten to this one yet, um, but I'm super excited to, to get to it. I'm hopefully this month or next. Uh, Nellie Bly also wrote a, a, a article called 10 Days in a Madhouse, and it was kind of the original expose journalism on how these asylum inmates is what I'm going to call them because that's how they were treated. Uh, they were patients, most of them, I think they were all women and they were being very mistreated and she pretended to be insane so she can get in and then actually see what was going on and then she got released finally. Uh, her employer came and set her out, but she just talks about her experience there. And that is where we get expose journalism, at least some of the, the initial rounds of it. Uh, read that primary document because it's fascinating uh, to see how people were treated. And I like women with gumption and I'm just excited. about. Okay. Uh, focus. Uh, other things. Look up, Book Riot has several lists online of different minority voices, uh, historical fiction, and just in general, uh, you will find all over the place on Book Riot. Um, uh, Making of Asian Americans by Erica Lee is another micro history. There's several different, there's so many books. I can't talk about all of them now or this video would become way, way too long. But look up history of Asian Americans or history of whatever group you're looking for, read the reviews on Goodreads and see what people are saying about them. If they have, you know, a good star rating, they're probably going to be decent. Uh, and if not, you can have your student read through it and decide what they didn't appreciate about the book. Maybe they thought it was misrepresented. Always look for those, those own voices, the, the books written by the people themselves that have those, those points of view. Um, or at least definitely people who have recommended them that are from that subset of society. Another thing, podcasts, Stuff You Missed in History and the History Chicks are great podcasts that talk about so many different historical events and people, and you get excited. You hear about the scandals, you hear about the foibles, the tensions, the, the battle between Tesla and Edison. Those are the things that are gonna make history come alive. Um, other things, different uh, memoirs or biographies. This is Warriors Don't Cry by Melba Petit Petillo Beals. Uh, I read this in college and I bought the audiobook from it when I saw it at the library sale because she writes about her experience as being one of the, the, ch the children that went into the des desegregated schools. Um, so pick those up. I would not be, wait one second, I would not be myself if I did not recommend movies and plays that talk about history, like The Crucible or um, The Butler spans several different presidencies over time and uh, one butler who works in the White House and what his pers perspectives were. Uh, Hamilton, can I say more than Hamilton? Look it up because you will be blown away. Read the lyrics as you listen especially if you're not used to listening to fast rap because uh, it does a great job of talking about the struggles and the people that were integral to starting America as it is today. Um, I think 
that is where I will leave off because I could go on forever and ever. But the main things, use primary sources, use art and music uh, to look up the people that time frame. Historical fiction is your friend. Micro histories are good. And use your internet for more because you're going to find out so much more about history than you thought ever was possible. You could really do this for years and years and never get bored. So, uh, yeah, that is my advice for you. And as far as the little ones, they can still use those techniques. Um, expose them to picture books uh, with different heroes in them I think is a great way to start out. They like listening to the music or seeing art from that time frame. Um, maybe you can have them do like a little coloring page. Story of the World has a lot of coloring pages. I know there's also these Dover books. Um, maybe not for a four-year-old, but for five to six is maybe when you start getting the Dover coloring books from all different um, time frames. I will talk to you all later because my two-year-old is calling. <laughs> Bye.